So our next speaker is, uh, I'm, I'm going to apologize in advance if I um, completely mess up your last name, Levan Sulaka Valij, speaking on comparative effectiveness of wall stents and Vanova stents for the treatment of non-thrombotic iliac vein outflow stenosis. And it's okay, I'm sorry if I wasn't even close. Good afternoon. First of all, on behalf of my co-authors and colleagues, thank you very much to the organizing committee for the opportunity to present here today. My name is Levan. I am a prospective medical student at the Center for Vascular Medicine. And today I'll be presenting a comparison of the stent patency and complication rates of the Boston Scientific Wall Stent and the Bard Venovo Stent for treatment of non-thrombotic iliac vein outflow obstruction lesions. So just to give a little bit of background on this study, iliac vein outflow obstructions are a major cause of pelvic and lower extremity symptoms. Uh, in fact, uh, our group previously reported that up to 80% of women with pelvic venous insufficiency have an iliac vein outflow stenosis. And for the past two decades or so, treatment with the Boston Scientific Wall Stent has been the standard of care. And there's a great deal of data on the clinical utility of that device. More recently, though, we have purpose-made, FDA-approved nitinol Venovo stents on the market. And the purpose of this investigation is to compare the patency and reintervention rates between the wall stent and Venovo stent. Our hypothesis is that the patency and complication rates are similar. So a little bit about our methods. We did a retrospective chart review of patient charts in our electronic health record system, NextGen, from dates of service April 2018 through December 2020. There were 1,401 stents placed in 1,151 patients in this time period. We selected a random sample of 100 Venovo stents and 100 wall stents for uh, a total population, uh, of total sample size of 200 patients. Some of the parameters we looked at include age, treatment type, past medical and surgical history, uh, visual analog pain scores, VAS, VCSS, and SEEP. Here are our patient demographics. Most of our patients were females, about 80%. And for the most part, there was no significant difference between uh, the comorbidities uh, in the Wall and Venovo groups, with the exception of hypercholesterolemia. So this chart shows the presenting symptoms uh, of our patients. So the blue bars are the wall stent group, and the orange is the Venovo group. Uh, patients were stratified into three groups based on presenting symptoms, uh, either leg only, pelvic only, or a mixture of pelvic and leg. And I'll get into the specific symptoms that go into each of those categories on the next slide. Uh, but most of our patients were in the mixed category with pelvic and leg symptoms. And there were no statistically significant differences uh, between the Wallstatt and Venovo groups in terms of presenting symptoms. So here are the pelvic symptoms. Uh, they include pelvic pain, dyspareunia, and dysmenorrhea. And there were no significant differences between the Wallstatt and Venovo groups. Leg symptoms include uh, leg pain, edema, venous stasis, skin changes, and skin ulcerations, and restless legs there were no significant differences uh, between the wall stent and Venovo groups. And the most common presenting leg symptom was swelling. So this kind of expands on the previous slide. This is the seep distribution of the patients at time of presentation. Most patients were C3. Any patient who was less than C3 had either significant, uh, severe lifestyle limiting pelvic pain and they had a full gynecological workup to rule out any potential GYN cause of their pain uh, before any intervention was performed. There were no significant differences in Wall Street and Venovo groups with the exception of uh, the C6 patients. There were more Venovo patients who were C6. This chart shows the stent diameters and lengths. Most of the wall stents, uh, as you can see in blue, are on the right side of the chart, uh, correlating with a larger diameter but shorter length stents while the Venovos are on the left side of the chart, um, the, the Venovos tended to be smaller in diameter but longer in length. The most common Venovo size was a 14 by 120 millimeter, 
and the most common wall stent size was a 20 by 80 millimeter wall stent. Here are the stent locations. The wall stent in blue tended to cover one territory, most commonly the left CIV, while the Venovo stent tended to cover more than one territory, uh, most commonly the left CIV and left EIV, also the right CIV and right EIV. So most of our patients were started on 90-day uh, post-operative anticoagulation. Uh, there, were, there was a significant difference in uh, the factor T in, in inhibitors. So most wall stent patients were started on Eliquis and most of Venovo patients were started on Xarelto. But this was purely on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, it was entirely at the physician's discretion. Here are the stent complications. The most common complication was transient back pain. And there were no significant differences in wall stent and Venovo groups uh, with regard to transient back pain or any of these other uh, complications. There were five wall stent reinterventions and four Venovo reinterventions. These are all 90-day post-operative complications. We only looked at 90-day uh, follow-up data in this investigation. There were no mortalities and no stent fractures. Here are the five wall stent uh, cases which required reintervention. This first case was an occlusion of the stent. The other four cases uh, were, uh, required stent extensions distally. And here are the four Venovo reinterventions. The first two are uh, venoplasties and the last two were stent extensions. So in, in conclusion, the reintervention and complication rates were similar between the wall stent and Venovo stents. Venovo stents tended to be longer uh, and smaller in diameter, but it resulted in CIV and EIV territory coverage, uh, while the wall stents tended to cover the CIV alone. So one Venovo could be used to cover two territories, uh, whereas with a wall stent, you need to oversize or use an overlapping stent. And one limitation of the study was that we only looked at 90-day follow-up. So future investigations will look at long-term follow-up data. So thank you very much. Nice job.